The new sculpting tools in Blender 4.3 are looking really good. So I'm going to quickly take you through some of the changes with a quick start guide. So I'm in Blender 4.3, I've got my default cube selected. I'm going to go across to the sculpting workspace. You can see my screencast keys down the corner here. And instantly you'll see the interface has changed slightly with our brushes now along the bottom here instead of along the left hand side here. If you're completely new to sculpting in Blender, you'll find that you won't be able to sculpt on your cube. That's because it hasn't got enough topology or faces. Sculpting will only affect the vertices. So I can sculpt on this bit here and you can see it just about moving. We need to add vertices to this. The simplest way to do that is using the remesh option up the top here, and that's in the same place. And under this menu, the two things you need to know about are voxel size and the remesh button there. And both those have keyboard shortcuts. If you press R, you'll get the voxel size and it's much easier to see it like this. You can see the size of the faces that I'm going to create and I'll go down to something like 0 0.04 and left click. So that's set the voxel size and you can see up here, we're roughly around 0 0.04 and the remesh button, the shortcut for that is control R. So you can see it's slightly changed there. And if I start drawing now, you can see those faces there. So R to set the face or voxel size and control R to actually do the remesh. You've got your radius and strength up here. You can change those with F for radius and shift F for strength. You've also got your brush settings down the side here under the active tool and workspace settings. You've also got your symmetry options up the top here and you can enable your symmetry for symmetrical objects. So for anybody new to sculpting, that is the quick start guide. Then you can now have a play with the brushes which are all listed along the bottom. And that of course is the big change. All your brushes are down the bottom here and these brushes are actually assets. There's a big advantage to this and that's that you can import brushes. So if you've seen a wonderful brush pack somewhere, you can download those and import them and you can create your own and save them into this asset shelf. There are a few new brushes. I won't go over those. I'll save that for another video, but you can use your scroll wheel to wheel through the menu here, or you can expand this out and make it bigger. And you can change the size or the display settings just here. I think something like 32 works well. You can of course include the names if you haven't got an oversized interface like I have. So I'll hide those for the moment. And you can choose to hide or show certain groups. So the paint brushes, for example, can be here, simulation brushes, all those sort of cloth things and so forth. Add and subtract. And then the general has the extra push and pull ones as well. I'll keep that on all for now. On the very side here, you have the actual asset library tools. So you can find different brushes from different libraries and so forth. See my video on asset libraries for more information on that. That's only something you have to worry about if you're actually importing brushes. If you create a new brush for yourself, you can save it here and it will always appear when you open up Blender. So let's do exactly that. Generally speaking, you'll probably always use the draw brush to create new brushes from. So I'll right click on that and we've got an option of duplicate asset. We can give this a name, I'll call this rock brush. And you can see it's going to save it to my user library. So I can press save. And you can see I've now got the draw brush here and my rock brush here. So on this rock brush, if I make some changes, let's say I add a texture to this. So under the texture, I'll click new. Unfortunately, we can't change the texture in here. We have to go to the texture properties here and then open up an image. So I'll press open here, go across to my brush folder and choose one of my rock brushes that I've downloaded from somewhere. Let's take rock seven here, open that up. And then I can start drawing with this. And you can see it's not doing a great job at the moment. I'd probably want to go back to my brush settings and you can see the texture pop in there. I'll minimize that. And under the stroke method, I can change this to something like anchored and it comes out with this texture here. However, it's not looking great. So I'll add a few more faces by pressing R for the remesh, bringing this down to something like 0 0.01 around there and control R to remesh. You can see now I've got some more detail. Let's bring out that rock brush. And now I can paint with this lovely rock texture. I can right click on this. I can add it to my quick favorites or give it a special keyboard shortcut. Let's try that. I'll click that and let's press Q for example. So let's go to a different brush like the blob brush here. When I press Q, you can see it selects my rock brush just there. The other great thing is that I can press file new and this time I'll open up a sculpting file. I won't save any of the changes. And even though I haven't saved any changes, if I come down to here, you can see there's my rock brush. And amazingly, it has the texture still there. And I can click and drag to add my rock texture to my sphere. I'll undo that though. Press R, bring my voxels down, control R to do the remesh. And then let's 
bring out some lovely rocks again. Oh, that's amazing, isn't it? So hopefully you can see how this asset shelf for our brushes is going to make things a lot easier within Blender's sculpting workspace. And keep an eye out on this channel for more videos about the individual brushes themselves. If you've got any questions, then do comment below and check the description for any updates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.